Financial independence is always talked about in small intervals, 10 years or less, 15 years or less. And I'm definitely guilty of this on my channel. I'm always talking about financial independence, you know, in 10 years or less. But you don't have to achieve, you don't have to have that large of a goal in that short amount of a period. You can achieve financial independence at a much slower rate and a much more comfortable rate. And what we call that, folks, is slow fi So slow financial independence. And in this video today, we're going to talk about how you can achieve slow financial independence and what you need to do to get started on your path. The important thing to first start talking about is how you can achieve any kind of financial independence. And specifically in this video, we're going to be talking about achieving it through an investment portfolio comprised of stocks and bonds. Okay, so when you are, you know, just considering uh, having an investment portfolio consisting of stocks and bonds and you want to achieve financial independence, one of the most important things that you need to keep in mind is how much money are you actually contributing to those investments. And what we call that is we call that your savings rate. Uh, but really it is what's known as your investment rate. How much of your take home pay, how much of your net income are you contributing to your investments? In this case, stocks and bonds, because that is pretty much going to be the number one determiner of if you are gonna achieve financial independence and how fast you can achieve it. So for example, let's make some assumptions. So let's assume that you're gonna get 7% annualized returns on your investments. Now, of course, you're not gonna get 7% every single year in a nice linear fashion, but over the long period of time, over the period of time that you're saving for financial independence, let's say that you average 7% returns. And then let's say that you plan to do a 4% withdrawal rate uh, because 4% is known as the safe withdrawal rate. So generally 4%, uh, you're probably gonna be good if you're withdrawing 4% or less of your assets per year. Now, let's also assume that you start with $0. So luckily uh, for this assumption, you don't start with any debt. Uh, you start with a net worth of pretty much zero dollars. You have no money in investments uh, for the sake of this scenario. And then one more assumption that we need to make is how much money you actually make per year. So about the median income in the United States, at least in 2019, it was $68,703 uh, per household. So that was the median household income. Uh, so for the sake of this assumption, let's assume that you're about in that median range and we'll top it off at a nice uh, even number of $70,000 per year. So we'll assume that your household uh, makes $70,000 per year. So now let's illustrate how long it's gonna take you to achieve financial independence with those assumptions in mind. Let me put up a chart on the screen real quick for you, just so we can illustrate that. And as you can see, uh, I have a table here from how long it's gonna take you to achieve financial independence. And the first one represents years. So we have 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 years. And then we have next to that, the amount of savings rate that you're gonna need in order to achieve it in that amount of years. So for example, if you wanna achieve financial independence in 10 years, you're gonna to need to save about 65% of your income, at least putting that in towards your investments per year. And if you want to do it in 30 years, you're only going to need a savings rate of about 21% in order to accomplish that. The income remains the same. And then the spending, of course, is going to differ because uh, that is dependent on your savings rate. So on $70,000 per year, if you want to achieve financial independence in 10 years or less, you're going to somehow have to live on $24,500. Now that can be easy for some people. It can be very difficult for others. That depends on a multitude of factors. But now if you're looking to achieve financial independence uh, in double that time frame of 20 years, you can see that you get to spend $43,400. Now it looks a lot more achievable. And I guess it's really important to note, how did I come up with those figures? How did I come up with a savings rate of this amount is going to equal financial independence in this amount of time? Well, I used a really cool calculator that I love using all the time called networthify.com. And so let me put up the screen for you real quick on networthify.com because this website and this calculator can actually be used to project uh, using your own assumptions, uh, how long it's gonna take you to achieve financial independence. So you can see the first result I got on here is that if you have a savings rate of 65%, that you can achieve financial independence in 9.8 years, so about 10 years. Whereas if you had a savings rate of about 38%, uh, you can see that you can achieve financial independence in about 19.9 years, so about 20 years. And that is basically what I did uh, for all of the different savings rates uh, for the years to five. So 10 to 30 years, I took that original uh, chart and that is pretty much how I inputted all that information in there. Uh, I used the net worth of five calculator and I think it's definitely a valuable asset for anyone that's trying to project their own financial independence. Now there's still so much more to come in this video, uh, but really quick, if you're liking this video so far, please make sure you like it and give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out and I really do appreciate it. While at the same time, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you have that bell on for notifications because every single week I'm putting out new information and new videos on personal finance about financial independence and I just know that there's something that I can help you with. Uh, right now I'm putting out new videos every Tuesdays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you have on that bell because you don't want to miss those new videos. 
Now, what's next? What's really important to know is why would you want to even achieve slow financial independence? Why not just try to do it in a short amount of time, like 10 years or less, like I'm always talking about? SoFly allows you to balance your lifestyle with your financial independence goal. So it allows you to balance your traditional lifestyle, you know, a more traditional spending lifestyle uh, with uh, still your goal of achieving financial independence, you know, achieving financial freedom one day and creating the ultimate financial security for yourself. Another good reason why you might want to achieve slow financial independence is that more people can do it. Slow financial independence allows a lot more people to be able to get on this path to financial independence. They can see that, you know, oh wow, I don't have to do it in just 10 years or less. I can achieve financial independence over a 30 year time period. And no matter what your income level is, no matter what your spending level is, uh, anyone, pretty much practically speaking, uh, can find a way to achieve at least slow financial independence. And thirdly, another good reason why you want, might want to achieve slow fi is that it doesn't take drastic changes to your lifestyle. You know, especially if you've been living the traditional American lifestyle up until this point, uh, you don't have to change every single thing. You don't have to do a 180 uh, and live this completely different lifestyle if you're trying to achieve financial independence, let's say in 10 years. You don't have to do that in order to get on the path to financial independence. You can make small but very important changes, you know, over a longer time period and eventually get there. And that's why I think that slow financial independence can work for a lot more people. The most important thing that you can do if you're watching this video is to just take actions. Whether you want to achieve financial independence in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, it doesn't really matter too much. Just taking action today and carving out a better future for yourself, for your family, for your friends, uh, whoever it may be, just taking action and improving yourself, especially when it comes to your personal finances, is never a bad idea. And if you're ready to start taking action, one of the best things that you can do to take action is to watch this video that I created called How to Achieve Financial Independence in 10 Years or Less. Even if you don't wanna do it in that short of a period, it's gonna be jack full of great information that anyone can find useful for their path to financial independence. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Zach from oncashflow.com and I hope to see you next time.